Hey, what's happening, guys? No zoo for you here, and I had a little stream with World of Warship's official channel the other day. Uh, they invited me on to do some streaming with Fem, and during that, the people watching the stream were able to ask questions, and one of the questions that came up kind of surprised me. Someone asked if I was going to bring Zoopy Sales back, and it took me a little while because I only did one of these episodes, and it was so long ago, I, I had to kind of jog my memory and remember what it was, but Zoopy Sales was essentially my version of, well, for lack of a better term, my own version of Mingles with Jingles. Just an episode where I can kind of shoot the ship and talk about whatever I want, stories from my life, whatever. And I know it's very hard to beat Mingles with Jingles. You really can't, can you? Because Jingles is Jingles, and Mingles with Jingles is phenomenal. But it was my own version, just my own type of show where I could talk about whatever I want. And it was asked that I bring it back. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring these back every now and then when I feel like it and just present a story from some point in my life or something random, touch on maybe a question for the community. I don't know. Basically a free for all. Anything I want. And this is going to be the first episode of the revised Zoopy Sales. I'm going to give you a little chapter from Young Zoop, a little escapade that I had with my friends, something exciting, and I had actually recorded this before someone asked for Zoopy Sales to come back, so sit back and here it is. I'm going to tell you about the legend of Slidell Road. Something from my childhood years. Well, not really my childhood years. Something from my high school years. And while that's going on, you're going to see this awesome Kitakaze gameplay in a round in which I helped save my team from utter defeat. We came back and we won, and this is just highlighting how absolutely extraordinary the Kitakaze is, especially when you are top-tiered in it. This ship is absolutely phenomenal. I absolutely love it. But, story time. Slidell Road and the legend of Slidell Road. So let me frame the picture here. I went to high school with 126 other individuals in my grade. Senior year, I graduated with that many people. So it was not a large school. I went to Poolsville High School in western Montgomery County, a nice little wealthy area out in the country, and actually my high school is now one of the number one high schools in America, though it wasn't at the time. I think at some point in the past decade, it was ranked number one out of everything, which is a pretty high accomplishment. I know I didn't contribute it to being that phenomenal. Now, I had a key group of maybe 20 or so friends in high school, and we found this place out in the country where we like to have parties. Bonfire parties, gigantic parties with lots of other schools showing up and partying with us. It was just an absolutely grand old time. And these took place out on Slidell Road. Slidell Road was out in the middle of nowhere, and we just happened to find this place where they're getting ready to build a golf course. That is the perfect place for a bonfire party. Out in the middle of nowhere, very few people that can hear you. And on top of that, not even close to the main road, out in the middle of the forest. You could not ask more for a place to hold bonfire parties. So, spring of 1999, we'd been going to Slidell Road for well over a year. We'd been having parties there, and me and my friends just having a good time, and our principal really wanted to hammer us. He wanted to get us. He had been after us for quite some time, but we were always one step ahead of him, one step ahead of the Montgomery County Police. They just could not wrap their hands around us. They couldn't get us. So everything's going great. We're going out to this super secret spot and partying all the time. And these parties are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What started off with just a small group of us, the 20 of my friends or so, kind of blossomed and grew from there. First it was 20 of these key individuals, and then on top of that, we had more people show up. And after those more people from my high school and different grades showed up, 
we slowly started seeing more schools showing up. Damascus people started showing up. And we were pretty good friends with a lot of people from Damascus. So it was only a matter of time before they started inviting their friends and the parties just started growing in size. Now normally at these bonfire parties, there is obviously a bonfire. We'd get some old pallets, some crates, and we'd start burning them. And there wasn't a lot of room to do this. It was really just a cut in the woods. And I, I would say maybe, maybe 2,000 square feet, if not. And that's probably being very, very conservative. So there wasn't a lot of room. So we're really just huddled around these immense bonfires. And they got pretty hot, and we got these fires pretty high, maybe 20 or 30 feet at the highest, and that's dousing it with gasoline. I would not recommend that. And yes, there would be alcohol at these parties. And at the heart of all of these parties was my 1998 Jeep Wrangler. I owned a Jeep Wrangler and I absolutely loved it. But I would drive my Jeep in there because it's one of the few vehicles that could actually get back there. I'd pop my trunk because I had two fairly large speakers and we would just blast music and we would have a wonderful, wonderful time. Now, again, spring of 1999. I'm playing baseball along with a lot of my good friends. We're on the baseball team. We're doing pretty good. Things are going great. We're having these parties here. We're getting ready to graduate in the spring, and we're having one of our wonderful bonfire parties. And for some reason, this particular night, on Slidell Road, I decided not to drive my Jeep into the spot that I normally drive it to. In fact, I didn't even go down Slidell Road. I parked it in a back entrance, off of a road that runs parallel to Slidell Road. No one else knows about this spot except me. So I drive a few of my friends, we walk in through the back entrance, and these two parallel roads are maybe separated by, eh, let's say, eight or 900 yards, and I take the back entrance, and the party begins. And it goes on. We're having a great time. Everybody's getting sloppy and having a fun, fun old time. And I don't know what was going on the next day, but for some reason, me and a couple of my other friends decided it was time to leave. Mind you, I did not do anything. I didn't have anything. So, you know, I'm, I'm completely sober, good to drive and everything else. And I start walking out towards the back exit to my Jeep along with, I want to say, maybe three or four of my other friends that I drove. And we start walking, and no sooner do we start walking, I hear someone yelling, 5-0, 5-0, 5-0! And before I know it, my group of five has grown into a group of ten or so. And I'm here thinking, there's no way we're getting busted. There's no way anyone even knows where we're at. So, I'm leading this group to safety, out the back exit, get to my Jeep, and obviously there's no way I can fit 12 people in a Jeep. So I do my best to fit, I'd say four or five of my friends. Two of them doubled up, two of them had their girlfriends with them, so the girlfriends were sitting on the laps of the friends, and we get out of there. I tell the other individuals, hey, you know what, we'll come back for you, we'll do whatever, we'll, we'll find you somehow. So we leave, and we're driving down the road, take a turn, and the road is blocked off by four cop cars. Four of Montgomery County's finest have blocked off the road to Slidell Road. I'm like, huh, that's not good. So we keep driving. We try and find some things out. Someone had a pager, and their pager lit up with 5 0, so we knew that there were cops. And we saw the cops, so we're like, oh crap, it really happened. I think we really got busted. Now, one of my friends is freaking out because his car's parked there, and he had already been in trouble for earlier that year during homecoming, wrecking his dad's 300ZX, going 114 miles per hour. He survived. The vehicle did what it was supposed to and completely disintegrated around him, keeping the cockpit intact, but he learned a valuable lesson, and he and cars were not really simpatico. So if he had gotten caught drunk at a bonfire party, he would have been in deep trouble. Now he's a lacrosse player, not a baseball player like me and the majority of my other friends. So he asked for a favor. He asked if I could go get his vehicle, to which I agreed. Because, again, I was sober. So I park at a reasonably close area to Slidell Road, 
and I start walking. And mind you, it's probably about a half a mile, maybe even close to a mile walk from where I was parked to the actual place where the bonfire was held. Now across from the entrance to where we held the bonfire, there's a giant field where everybody would park their cars, and that's where my friend's car was. So I set off walking, and I come up to this police roadblock, and they're just kind of looking at me like, what the hell is this kid doing? I say, hey look, you know, I'm just here to pick up my vehicle. I'm completely sober. I need to take a breathalyzer so I can be on my way. And they're like, all right, walk down that way. So I start walking. And I'm walking, and I'm walking, and as I'm walking, I'm seeing a lot more cop cars, and a lot more cops. I mean, Montgomery County Police Department called out the works for this bonfire party. There were a ton there. There was a cop that walked by me with a canine. Yeah, a canine. Seriously, for a bonfire party. But they really wanted us, and they had not been able to catch us, and finally, this was their moment. They had us. So I'm walking along the woods and the road, and it's dark, and it's chilly, passing by more cops, and it's always the same thing every single time. What are you doing? Oh, I'm here to get my vehicle. Here to take a breathalyzer. All right, keep walking, keep walking. And as I'm walking down, I see the little path that leads back to the bonfire party. Two cop cars are trying to go down it, or had tried to go down it. One of them busted their exhaust. They're trying to beat that thing back in. Wasn't a good idea for them to go down. And there's just cop cars everywhere. There's cops everywhere. I see high schoolers everywhere. Some in handcuffs. And it is just crazy. And finally, I get to where I need to take the breathalyzer. I go up to the cop and I'm like, look, I'm here to pick up my vehicle. I, I just need to take a breathalyzer. And they're like, okay, all right. So I take the breathalyzer, they look at it, 0.0, of course, and the cop looks at his buddy and says, eh, should we give it to him? And he's like, no, no, let him go. I'm like, all right, thank you. So I walk out to the field, and I go to get my car, or my friend's car, and at first I had trouble finding it, because there's still so many cars out there. I'm like, where the hell is this little red Corolla thing? This red 1990s Corolla. And so I finally find it after like five minutes. The two cops are by the parking, and I'm worried that they're going to start staring at me. And I start opening this vehicle, and I'm like, crap, these keys aren't working. What the hell is going on here? And I'm trying to open it, and the keys just do not work. And I'm like, why, why can't I open this vehicle? And finally, one of the cops shines his light over, and he's like, what's the matter? Don't recognize your own car? And as soon as that flashlight came over to me, I just caught a glimpse of my friend's car maybe five cars over, and I'm like, no, sorry, I just picked the wrong car, it's over here, and I pointed right at it, walked right to it, opened it right away, got in, and drove off, out the other direction I came from. And as I'm leaving, I see even more cops, and I see that side of the road blocked off. The cops have radioed down to let me out, so I get out of there, I give my buddy his car back, and I tell him what I saw. And it was insane because I counted over 20 cop cars. At least over 20 cop cars, K9, the works, all to bust probably well over 70 individuals. Now, there was definitely fallout from this. I went home, nothing happened obviously, because I didn't do anything wrong, other than being there. The very next school day, that Monday, was quite interesting. That's when the fallout happened. Everyone that was at that party and played on a sports team had to answer for what had happened that night. On the baseball team, right before practice started, we were all put into a formation, probably about five yards away from each one of our teammates. And our head coach just went down the line one by one. He walked up to each player and it was always the same. Were you at the bonfire party? And he followed that up with, did you drink any alcohol? So he came to me, and it was my turn, and he said, were you at the bonfire party? I'm not going to lie about that. I mean, everybody knows who was there. Everybody knew I was there. So I said, yes. Did you have any alcohol? No. And on he went. Till he came to one of my good friends. One of my good friends whose twin brother played baseball, who I was also good friends with. He came to him and asked those questions again. Were you at the alcohol party? Yes. Did you drink any alcohol? And he had to say yes, because he was caught by the police, 
got minor in possession, and that was that. It was a handshake, and sorry, I gotta let you off the team, and my friend was sent home packing. Now, a lot of players on other teams, a lot of lacrosse players and women's lacrosse players and everything else, they lied. I know a lot of people that lied and got away with it, and that's fine. You know, self-preservation is key in these instances. I probably would have done the same thing. But my poor friend did not have that option because it was known that he got caught and he got busted. Other interesting things happened that night. One of my other really, really good friends had been drinking, and he was driving out of there. And he got caught, pulled over, given a breathalyzer, and even after six beers, blew a 0.0. .0. He lucked out, and that's awesome, but not my friend on the baseball team. So he was sent home, and we're standing there just kind of in awe of the thing, saying, wow, he's really not playing with us anymore. Season started, we're almost halfway done, and he's not going to be playing with us anymore. So we walk up to the coach and say, hey, can we, can we go back to uh, his house and kind of console him? He's probably upset right now, and coach is like, yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Meanwhile, we're just thinking, hell yeah, we just got out of practice. We go back to the home, which was two houses down from mine. He's in there. He's just watching TV, eating uh, cereal. And he's just like, all right, whatever. <laughs> and that was that. That was that. Yeah, Slide L Road. Police finally got us. Finally. So that's just one of the little stories that me and my friends always talk about. One of the stories that I will carry with me. For all time, the time the cops finally got us, the time Montgomery County Police finally got us, and they got us good. I mean, it wasn't just my friend that got busted. A lot of other people got busted too. There's some DUIs handed out. There were some minors in possessions handed out. And you know what? It didn't stop us. We didn't learn our lessons. We just found other places to go. We had plenty of other places, but I don't think for the rest of our senior year we ever, ever had a party that was quite as large as that last party on Slidell Road. I don't think we did, and I don't think any party that I had ever been to after that matched it. Except, you know, college, because I went to some pretty good parties in college that numbered in the, well, yeah, several hundreds at good old Oklahoma State. And for any uh, other individuals out there who went to college and have been to college parties, especially fraternity parties, which I was in a fraternity in college, you know how those get. And I won't say that that party at Slidell Road was the last party I had ever been to that got busted. It wasn't. It wasn't. But it was probably one of the most memorable. So what are your stories? What are your stories of being busted in high school by the man I'm interested to hear them. Let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this little bedtime chat because I enjoyed telling it to you. Anyhow, guys, hope all is well. I'll be back with some Warships-related material, but I just wanted to change things up a bit. Zoop out.